Hello everyone, welcome to next APM training video tutorial and in this session we are going to have a look at APM and Android mobile app automation. In last session we saw Android mobile web automation so it's the time to check out Android mobile app automation. So let's see what we are going to check in this session. Uh, I'm going to use Visor again to be able to demonstrate what I'm doing on the mobile app and uh, next, <clears throat> sorry. Next, I'm going to start the APM server and we are going to have a look at something called APM Inspector. We saw APM server briefly in the last session and uh, if you do not know more about it and if you're new to APM, then I'm also going to link the previous tutorial in this session so you can have a look at that. That would be available in the description of this video. So let's get started. Uh, yep. So first thing is to start the visor. So here I have my mobile app so whatever I do here you would be able to see over there and next let's start the APM server which I am running locally let me shut down the visor now so I could uh, use this only when I need it and not right now it is unnecessary resource consumption so I have APM server up and running right now and now we are going to look at uh, APM inspector which is a very useful utility can be used to find out uh, application elements uh, from within APM this is like how we can inspect elements on web applications in for example browsers like Chrome or Firefox so to be able to bring um, APM inspector I'm going to hit the search icon here and then we have APM inspector come up and it has various uh, sections uh, and one of them is desired capabilities this is where we can specify the capabilities uh, using which uh, we are going to identify the application what I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, use the one which I have saved in past so I have saved Android capabilities here if I click edit it is going to reload them here and you can see that I have a platform name which is Android and the de device name which is well some weird string how do I get the device name we saw this in last session as well let's have a look at this again so we can get device name using something called ADB devices which is Android debug bridge and this is my mobile device which is attached to it and then what we can do is we can start the session here so let me hit the start session and as soon as I do this you see that it's going to load the current screen on my mobile app in here. Uh, let's start the visor now <laughs> uh, so we can see what's really happening on the mobile app. Yep. So this is my mobile application Android uh, calculator application which is available on the mobile app and this is the same thing you see on the APM inspector here now to be able to identify different elements what we can do is we can oops not this we can click on different elements here and then it would highlight the uh, the attributes and their values uh, for this element on the app for example if I see this is 7 here it has got resource ID which is nothing but the ID as com android calculator 2 colon id slash digit 7 in the similar way i can identify other elements using apm inspector so it's very handy to be able to find out elements to be used in uh, mobile test automation uh, next next we need to find out something called app package and app activity so these are two uh, two strings which we need to know to be able to identify app which would be used for automation and there are different ways to find out app package and app activity what i am doing here is i have installed one app called apk info which i am going to use and show you how we can use this to find out app package and app activity so let me open the visor again and this is my mobile application and i have something called apk info yes it's right here let me open this and i have the calculator here and you see here on the calculator on the top section here where my cursor is right now you see a string like com.android.calculator2 this is the app package and calculator this is the app activity so 
make a note of this because we are going to use this next while setting up the test run using test and XML file. Uh, next, yep, so we have seen this here. So let's see what we have in test and XML file. So this is our project which we usually use Selenium test. I'm going to link this also in the description of the video. It's available on GitHub so you can try it out yourself. And in this, I have a test tag here, which is for Android app test. We have used this file to run test on browsers, mobile browsers, and now we are using it to run test on Android app. So it has different parameters here. Browser is Android here, test type is app because we are running test well on app. APM server URL is my local host where I'm running the APM server. Mobile platform version is 10 here. This is what I found using the settings section of my mobile phone you may have it different and the device name we saw earlier this can be found using adb devices one important point to note here is something called automation name which is uh, ui automation 2 so this is uh, a test automation framework for android devices uh, used by apm there's a github project for this so if you want to check it out you can have a look at that now comes the most important part so we have to specify which app we want to test so we have two options here at least in case of android app what i have come across we can either specify the app directly which is path to the app this could be local location of the apk file or it could be http url from where apm would take the apk file and install it uh, on the mobile app so this is one way another way is to specify the app package and app activity and if you remember we had a look at app package and app activity a while ago so this was right here i used apk info app and com.android.calculator2 is the app package and calculator is the app activity then we have something called browser name while well, it's empty because we are not automating browser here command timeout is 120 seconds which is two minutes Parallel is set to false and the test which we are going to run here is Android app test. So let's have a look at this, what's happening in the Android app test. So what we are doing here is in Android app test, we are adding two numbers. So we have a page object for something called calculator screen. Now let's see what we have in calculator screen. We have seen many page objects in past, so this is nothing new. This is a page object which is going to provide the services for, well, calculator screen and in this case what we have is we have page object methods which are used in android app test so how does this begin we have an instance of calculator screen then we do a click on digit 2 then we click plus then we click digit 4 then we click equal and then we get the result text so let's see the implementation of these methods one by one click digit is a method which is going to get element which is whichever symbol we want to click and then click on it. So it has a method called get digit element. And if I see its implementation, yep, it's right over here. I'm using new button element, which is from Selenium test framework. We have seen many times in past as well. And then we are specifying something called digit button. You can specify whichever string you find is useful to be able to read the test report and how we identify element is using ID. Now, if you remember, we had a look at this a while ago on apm inspector so if i open it again uh yep so this is the id here which is nothing but the resource id com dot android dot calculator 2 colon id slash digit underscore 5 and what i have done here is for each digit this is going to be same what differs is the underscore followed by the number so i have sort of parameterized it so whichever symbol i'm going to click would be replaced here so if i click on two then it will be replaced by two or three or four and then an id element would be created simple isn't it and then next we have click plus so click plus is another method which has get plus element and if you see here again element is identified using id more or less same as the symbol element or the plus uh, or the digit element followed by op underscore add text so if we highlight plus here you will see yep this is the resource id uh, so this way we can identify the plus element then we have something called um, click digit which is same as click digit 2 in this case we were hitting 2 next we hit 4 and then we have click equal 
which again identifies equal element using id and then clicks on it in the end we get the result text using a label element called result text and then the id if you notice here these strings like com dot android dot calculator too they are common in all of these elements so you know we can even extract them out we don't have to repeat them every time we can get rid of this duplication and uh, make it more uh, maintainable all right let's see what's happening next in the text uh, test so we get the text element and we get the text from the text element and then we compare that this is equal to six so what we do we have two plus four equal get the text and find out whether it is equal to six or not well what's the fun in uh, learning all of this if we do not run the test so let's run the test and see how this goes so i have my app here or maybe i just close this and i run it uh, mm, yeah i run it and then we see how this works so let me start the run here and let's see how this goes yep test run has started you can see some logs scan here and i'm hoping it would launch the calculator app it did that it is hit it has it two plus four and uh, that was six it was quite fast let's run it once again so it will launch the mobile uh, it will launch the mobile app calculator and would sum two and four here we go calculator app two plus four six and test run is over and yeah you see the prompt here that test run has been completed successfully now what we can do is uh, we can also see the stf test report now which is yeah, right here and i would open it in my browser yep so this is the android app test automation and these are the steps which are printed here which we are specified on the test uh well not on the test but on the page object so this is the button element two which is clicked button element add is clicked then button button element four is clicked then button element equal is clicked and then in the end we are getting the text mm, let's let's uh uh make it fail and run it once again let's let's do it as seven and see how this goes this may take some time because the test would be retried so my hunch is that it would take longer but let's see how this goes so this is the first run yep okay but this was not retried so probably this one is not set but that's all right because uh, we just want to see the uh, test failure here and if you see here test has failed yeah, it says it was expecting seven but was six we just uh, introduce this error which is why we got this uh, and okay this is the past run um, yeah let me open this report again um Okay, there is something I need to check with the report. Uh, yeah, this should have been uh, red, not all net, not all green, but I'll have a look at this later on. And this is our failure result. Anyways, uh, so this was all about uh, mobile app automation, specifically Android app automation using APM. And uh, I hope you find this session useful. If so, then please hit the like button. This was all for this session. Happy learning. Bye-bye.